Welcome back to Game Theory 101. I'm William Spaniel. Today's topic is expected utility transformations. We've covered the four axioms we need for expected utility theory. Completeness, transitivity, independence, and continuity. Now it's time to see what we can do with that. It's actually pretty simple. Suppose that an individual's preferences follow those four axioms. Then we can use a numerical or utility representation of those preferences. This result is pretty old. It dates back to 1947, which means it's slightly earlier than John Nash. And this result was found by a couple of guys named von Neumann and Morgenstern. So if you ever hear of expected utilities being called von Neumann and Morgenstern expected utilities, that's why. It's because these guys figured out that we could represent preferences in this manner. To be clear, what's going on here is almost a bit of a sleight of hand, but as it turns out, it's really useful for us, and this is something that I've alluded to throughout this unit. What von Neumann and Morgenstern are saying is that if we have a strategic interaction that looks like this, this is a stag hunt, both players can choose stag or hare, and we have four different outcomes that result from that where I've denoted these as degenerate lotteries, degenerate lottery 1, degenerate lottery 2, 3, and 4, rather than thinking about preferences over these lotteries, like individual 1 prefers stag stag, lottery 1 to lottery 4, he also prefers lottery 4 to lottery 3, and there's also some sort of preference over lotteries over those degenerate lotteries. Instead of thinking about preferences in that manner, we can instead use numbers. We can find numbers that remain faithful to these preferences over lotteries. For example, these numbers here. That doesn't mean that we can choose any number whatsoever. For example, this interaction here is different than this interaction here, where I've changed player one's utility for having the stag-stag outcome. This represents a different set of preferences over the original degenerate lotteries. But nevertheless, there exists some setup for these numbers that represents those preferences exactly as we would want them to. But be careful about this definition. One thing to note about it is I said that we can use a numerical utility representation of those preferences. I didn't tell you how many we can use. And in fact, we can use infinitely many. Despite the fact that these two games are different, this game is different from this game. These represent different preferences over lotteries. If we take a single set of preferences, there are infinitely many different ways we can represent those preferences with utilities. So when we're saying A, this is just saying one exists, and it's not only one, it's infinitely many. Why is that the case? Well, expected utilities are identical to something known as a positive affine transformation. What is that? Well, a positive affine transformation takes the form of A times U, where U is the utility, plus B, where A is some positive value and B is any real number. This is called positive affine transformation because the form some number times utility plus some other number, that is affine, and A is restricted to a strictly positive number, so that's why it's called positive positive affine transformations. Why does this work? How can it be that we can have one set of utilities that remains faithful to an individual's preferences over lotteries, and then we can transform those utilities and still keep it in a way that remains faithful to those individual's preferences, those original preferences? Well, think about this. Suppose that we have utility one representing some preference for an individual and utility two. So utility 1 is greater than utility 2, meaning that the lottery that's associated with this outcome 1 or this lottery over outcome 1 is better than the outcome or the lottery over outcomes of this utility 2. Now consider the transformation, that positive affine transformation. So we take the utility in each of these circumstances, multiply it by A, and then add B. So we have A times U1 plus B, and then we have A times U2 plus b. Well, is it the case that the individual still prefers this first outcome, this utility of 1, to the utility of 2? And as it turns out, if you do a little bit of algebra, it's very easy to show that it does. We can erase the b's on both sides, we can subtract that from both sides, and then we can divide everything by a, and we're left with u1 being greater than u2. 
So it's still the case that the individual prefers the outcome associated with what's on the left to the outcome that's associated on the right. Nothing has changed there. This also reveals why we have to have positive affine transformations. Remember, A needs to be some number greater than zero. That allows us to divide both sides by A and not have to do anything funky with the inequality. If A were a negative number, that would actually flip the inequality around to the point that now the individual would prefer the outcome associated with this utility 2 to the outcome associated with utility 1. And if it were the case that A were equal to 0, which is also not allowed by positive affine transformations, then we would have an inequality where 0 is actually equal to 0. So that would also ruin the preference, the original preference, of U1 being greater than U2. So, what this means is that there are multiple ways of representing any one particular game. Think about this original stag hunt. We saw this before. Well, imagine if we take a positive affine transformation for player one, just player one, and we make it so that A is equal to two and B is equal to zero. Essentially, we double player one's payoffs, all of them. We're left with this game here, where now it's a 6 instead of a 3, a 4 instead of a 2, a 2 instead of a 1, and you know 0 times 0, or rather 0 times 2 remains 0, so that doesn't change. This is exactly the same game as it was before. Nothing has changed. We've just come up with a different way of representing an individual's preferences. We don't care about the utilities directly. Utilities are a tool. They make it easier for us to analyze a game. And as long as we have positive affine transformations, we're staying faithful to the original preferences of the individual. If you don't believe me, try solving the original game, this game right here. Solve for its two pure strategy Nash equilibria. Solve for its mixed strategy Nash equilibrium. Then do the exact same thing for this game. Solve for its two pure strategy Nash equilibria. Solve for its mixed strategy Nash equilibrium. As it turns out, you'll see this. Both of those are going to be identical. The equilibria for this game is going to be e identical to the equilibria for this game. And that's because, again, these utilities are remaining faithful to the original preference orderings over the outcomes and the lotteries associated with those outcomes, which is what the equilibria are getting at when you get all the way down to it. Keep in mind, in between these two games, I have multiplied all of the utilities by the same number, that same A. So when you're converting utilities, when you're doing one of these transformations, you have to do it to every single utility for a single player. You don't have to do it for both players, but for player one, in this case, I had to apply that transformation to every single outcome. If you don't do that, then you're not staying faithful to the original preferences, and so you're not going to have the same game. But you can do different utility transformations for the different players. So I multiplied it player one's utilities by two. I could also say, let's make A equal to one and B equal to negative one. And that would give us this utility transformation for player two, where I've essentially just subtracted one from every one of player two's outcomes or payoffs. This is again, the exact same game as the original game and the exact same game as the transformation where I just had player one's utilities transformed. You could solve for this game's pure strategy Nash equilibria, solve for its single uh, mixed strategy Nash equilibrium, and it would be identical to the other two games that we've seen before. That's how we do these utility transformations. But that's just one type of utility transformation. It's this positive affine transformation. One thing that's interesting is that all other transformations are not identical. So if you take this game here, and you come up with some other utility transformation that does not follow this positive affine setup. Maybe you make A equal to negative one, or maybe you make A equal to zero. Maybe you square or cube or raise all of the utilities for a single player to the fourth power. If you try doing that, that's going to change things. It might change the pure strategy Nash equilibria. It might change the mixing values for the mixed strategy Nash equilibrium. It's only these positive affine transformations that keep the original preferences in order. Any other transformation is not going to remain faithful to those original preferences. So that's utility transformations for you. We see that there are multiple ways of representing any one preference, although the relationship does not go the other way around. The utilities that we have can only represent a single preference.
But this has some interesting implications for what we think about when it comes to efficiency for games. And that's what we're going to be tackling in the next lecture when we talk about Pareto efficiency. I hope you enjoyed this and hope to see you next time. Take care.